Your Grace. I feel I've been remiss in my duties. I've given you meats and wine and music, but I haven't shown you the hospitality you deserve. My king has married, and I owe my new queen a wedding gift. This was an event that was not only from the books, but it was one of the primary reasons that we wanted to make this show. We thought that this was a, getting to the Red Wedding for us was, was, was such a major milestone and such a source of trepidation because uh, I remember how it made me feel to read this thing. To have this thing happen in a book, I was reading and not be able to believe what I was, what I was reading. And there was a tremendous responsibility there to do justice to it. I remember the experience of reading the book was kind of shock and, and horror. But then later, how did I not see that coming? Because, you know, all the clues are there. And, and certainly you knew that Rob was heading into a dangerous situation. But somehow your guard drops and you realize that Edmure, despite all his fears, he's not marrying some hideous a monster, he's actually marrying this beautiful young woman, and that turned out really well. And it looks like, hey, this might have a happy ending. And of course, it all starts to change when you hear the Reigns of Castamere play, and you think, that's not right. So many of the stories in this world revolve around the cost of honor and the cost of love and all of the things that we consider to be good things in our lives, like love, honor, and family, loyalty, and duty, and all of these things end up losing people their heads or getting them, you know, murdered at their own wedding. So what we were hoping for with the scene is something similar, where things seem to be going so well, and then it all takes a very dark turn. And as you say, it's not, it doesn't end quickly. It's not uh, all over in a hail of crossbow quarrels. It actually lingers what we hope is for an uncomfortably long period of time. I mean, that last shot of uh, Catelyn standing there, um, almost wanted to just, you, you're kind of hoping for a cut to black. You just want it to be over um, because it's, you're watching this woman that you care about so much in her absolute, the most horrible possible place. A mother having seen her own son killed before her eyes and having really nothing left to live for at that moment. You know, believing all her other sons are dead and, and presumably her daughters are, are dead or at least in the grips of the Lannisters and it's just all. Her, her husband has preceded her long before and it's, um, it's all over for her. <laughs> Michelle in, the, in that last scene is just so powerful. Uh, you know her voice when she's when she's talking to Walder Frey and and, uh, and pleading with him and and uh, you know you can hear me talking. But it's hard for, it's hard for me to talk about because it was just it was you know and it's it's been working in this business for a while and and certainly you know working a lot of different you know whether it's this show so many different episodes or other movies but there's never been a moment like that for us. I mean we knew going into season one the second Sean being showed up on set for the first day, it was like, hello, we will be chopping your head off uh, three months from now. And uh, everybody knew that, and that was, was one of the ground rules. We knew, obviously, when Richard and Michelle showed up for work on their first day, we distantly knew that somewhere in the future, these, uh, if we all got lucky enough and the show didn't sink to the bottom of the ocean in the middle of the first season, that it was in the back of our minds that the Red Wedding was there looming, but it wasn't something that really informed our, our daily lives working with them. So these people become like family members to you. And they're people you spend so much time with and that you fly all over the place with and you, you on screen, off screen, on set, off set, you become very, very close to. Richard Madden was so good at portraying Rob that we just kept writing more for him. So, you know, Rob is not a POV character in the book. So even though he's a, a very important character, 
he doesn't have a huge amount of page time. And we wanted, after we saw what he did in season one, we wanted him to have a great deal of screen time. So we kept writing more scenes for him and, and uh, several scenes that either aren't in the book or are um, kind of mentioned in the book, but you don't actually witness them. We wanted to be there for it. And so Richard became an incredibly important part of the show. Michelle has always been an incredibly important part of the show. And, and the two of them are such commanding figures. You know, they're so, they're so powerful in their presence and they're so fun to write for. And, you know, they, they're really kind of the nobility of the show. I mean, the Stark family has always been the emotional core, um, and they're getting picked off one by one, you know, or in this case, two by two. It's like your favorite, one of your favorite cousins moving to Australia. You're not gonna see them as often as you've been seeing them in the past, and they're fixtures in your life, and then all of a sudden, they're not fixtures in your life anymore. Una as well, somebody who we, we all spent so much time with. So it was a definite personal, aspect to it, I think, for us. Most of the crew has been together since the pilot and, and, and most of the cast, you know, so we're going back now, is it five years? Um, and, and you know, so, and I remember being in the room with, um, when Richard Madden first came in to audition for us and I remember the first time I saw Michelle Farrelly on stage in Othello, you know, years ago and thought, who is that woman? So the set for those days was, was especially the last day. Um, it was just a very strange, there was a very strange atmosphere. You know, the people in Northern Ireland are, are tough. You know, the guys in our crew, um, the guys, the, the men and women, I'm saying guys in the kind of gender neutral way. But like, it's a tough group. Like the Northern Irish are not, are not wussies. And, and, uh, and I've never seen so many tears. At this point, I feel like the world of the show has definitely announced itself as a world where like in our world where these horrible things do happen to good people and the heroes that you want to see come out on top and triumph don't always come out on top and triumph and i think that it uh it's very much of a piece with with the fabric of the show this is more about the cost of love than the cost of honor i remember a high school teacher once talking to me about uh, tragedy being not good versus evil but good versus good and, and what you do when you're faced with two conflicting goods and the good of, of love against the good of, of honor and keeping your, keeping your word. And Rob made a choice there, uh, and he, it's taken a while, but he ends up paying for that choice uh, in the worst possible way in this scene. You go watch a Spider-Man movie and there might be thrilling fights and death-defying acts, but you know Spider-Man's gonna be there at the end, you know? So there's not that much suspense. And even in the fantasies that I've loved before, I mean, Lord of the Rings is, um, you know they're gonna defeat, you know, the Dark Lord. Sauron's not gonna win. The Hobbits aren't gonna get massacred. There's never been a good versus evil epic fantasy that ended with evil winning. I'd like to see that movie, and maybe we will here. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it's much more about the, the human journeys and just as in real life, sometimes the best of us um, don't make it to the end, don't make it to an old age. So it's, it's, it's a difficult, it's a challenge uh, always in this show, and it, but it's also what we love about it, you know, just that sense that everyone is at risk. Even the most beloved characters might not make it to the next episode. And, and uh, that's what we loved about the books and that's what we're trying to recreate with the series. Mother. The Lannisters send their regards. <laughs> <laughs>